Hey, right. what's going on, everybody? <laughs> My, welcome to Not As Interesting As We Think. That's Julie. I'm Dave. And this is the inaugural episode. Um, we're going to talk about art. We're going to talk about creative business. We're going to talk about all kinds of things, especially technology, like the technology that it takes <laughs> to run a podcast, because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we've been sitting here toggling around all these wires and 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 settings for 30 minutes already and now we're here so welcome to the show guys um well, hey dave welcome <laughs> <laughs> anyway so you're probably watching this on youtube you might be listening to us on spotify uh either way if you're listening to us on spotify understand that there's going to be a visual representation that might not necessarily come through so you know subscribe to both because uh, you know that way you let you get both sides of who we are. And if you're just driving down the road, don't watch the YouTube video, you know, just no, don't you know, do that. Don't do right. that. <laughs> Safety first. Safety, Safety first, first in podcasting. Yes. Yeah. And just a little caveat. If you have kiddos in the car or, you know, kiddos in the background while you're watching this, you know, maybe, you know, like turn them, put on your headphones or send them to the other room or, you know, put a laptop or, in front, or an iPad in front of them. So they're not paying attention to you anyway, because there may be a little bit of language, right? A little bit. We're Right. We're all adults here. I We're think. adults here. We're, we, you know, sometimes you just have to punctuate things with a, like, a, uh, right. You know, you just right. like, Duh, right. Right. It's part <laughs> so, of me. It's part of who I am. Well, we, it's part we, of who we are. We'll try to keep it at bay. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so anyway, I can't so make any, I can't make any promises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No promises. No. That's why we put the caveats out there first. So uh, I think it's important for us to let people know who we are. Right. So like I said, right. I'm Dave Conry. This is Julie Pritchard. No T and Pritchard. The there way. is no tea. Hi, Dave. She made that perfectly clear with me the first time we ever started talking. Yes, but, uh, no tea. <laughs> no tea Please. and Pritchard. Um, Julie, tell yeah. people a little bit about yourself. Uh, there's a lot, so I'll make it short. I, I don't like talking. This makes me very uncomfortable, so I wrote a small, um, I wrote a card to, to just flow through it all. Um, I This is my second career. My first career, I was a gemologist. I worked in luxury sales. Um, with um, identifying gemstones, diamond grading, a color stone identification, valuation, and thing like that, client experience, and also um, developing and facilitating product knowledge information to employees to help them selling. So a natural mm -hmm. transition when I left that career um, was when I started painting, people started asking me how to do it. So it just blossomed into my my business that I've been doing since 2009. And I just wrote, I wrote the key points down um, in case you don't already know. Uh, I'm going to read them here. This is like my, um, I'd like to accept this war award. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'd like to think. So um, not only do I paint abstract art, I work in acrylic. Um, I also produce all the images. I'm the photographer for all of my content across a website, social media, um, creating all the social media, written content, video production, video editing, website design. I write, film, edit, and host workshops. In the online workshops, I also provide coaching. So back and forth with all the students, um, coaching on the techniques that I'm teaching. Um, since 2009, I've been doing that. I have a monthly subscription service that I started last April. I analyze all my metrics and website, social media, um, like ad nauseum, just to make sure that I'm, you know, I'm the, my sole marketing department. I'm a mom, I'm a wife. Um, and now I'm a podcast host with you. So welcome aboard <laughs> yeah. this crazy train. <laughs> yeah. She manages the, she manages all the tech for yeah. the, uh, for the podcast. And then, right. uh, and then I manage all the creative the words right. and the and the and the pictures. So, um, yeah, it's a good balance. Know, it's a good balance for sure. It's a so. good balance. Okay, Dave, you go. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Julie. <laughs> so I'm Dave Conry, and I am a graphic designer, art director by trade. Um, I retired from that um, several years back because of uh, well, I got I kind of got pink slip, uh, permission slip, meaning that I got laid off from my job because they were parting out the company. And I decided to go do my own thing. And in that interim, I was also doing art for myself because I needed a creative outlet. But one thing that I felt very passionate about is like when people would ask me, just like you, people would ask me questions about how I did the things, how I would show up. Like, you're so good at the writing. You're so good at the videos. You're so like, you're, you've got a great podcasting voice and all that. Cause I have done a couple of the podcasts in the past. And, and it just kind of became this, this thing, right? Where it's like, I share more information with people 
then, you know, like it just felt good when somebody would learn from that and go do something with it. So I just kind of leaned into that. And I've been doing that as kind of like, I go back and forth throughout my career the last 10 so years that where I've like leaned more into the art, lean more into the, you know, the kind of like the content oriented stuff, right? Go back and forth. And right now I'm definitely more into the content side of things because I run a newsletter called The Hungry, which is all about creative business, news, stories, insights that I like to share with other people to, to kind of give them a little bit more context to some of the things that are happening, whether it's like social media or whatever, or just you know, what's happening in business, what things to consider, what what can you pull from other industries to bring in as far as ideas for ourselves. So a lot of marketing, promotion, things like that. And I've been running that since in that form, in the, in the form of The Hungry, I've been running that since probably April of 2022 and it's been going pretty well, you know? And so, you know, that's just kind of how I've, I've been operating and I love it and I love doing it. And so I love sharing. So that's, that's where we are. And this podcast just kind of works kind of in conjunction with that because it goes with the sharing. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Plus the, the, you know, the back and forth, you know, the, yeah the, 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 the being able to bounce ideas off other people and talk about other people is, is important because like you, you work by yourself. You obviously noted all the things you do for yourself. I also do everything I do by myself. I don't have any assistants. I don't have any, like <laughs> anybody. Have a team. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't have any minions yet. Like I'm keep trying to get my son to help me with things, but he'll never, he never wants to hold the camera. So yeah. <laughs> I know. So I need a key grip, you know, the sharing, the sharing is what I think. So a lot of times I think we all, you've all had it where you've typed a thoughtful comment or left some sort of information on somebody else's post. And that did not generate a back and forth with the author. And I think the sharing is what like, like attracted is kind of weird, but I was like, wait a second the content's really good. And I really liked what you were saying and the things that you were saying. And I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so yeah. then I, you know, I did a little, I did a little internet, um, um, stalking on your stuff. And I was like, I think I really like Dave's point of view. So that's when, you know, that I, who would have thought I did not know in 2024 that I was going to start a podcast. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. No. So yeah. you didn't, it's you exciting. had no impetus for this at all. Like you didn't even think about I thought I was thinking about how to share this, um, this type of information. Um, but I didn't know how I was going to do it because I was not, um, a fan very much. Uh, like I'm not a, a regular podcast listener, but the video comes very naturally to me. Um, so I was thinking how I could do it. I, and then the other thing that I was thinking about while I, these ideas were brewing, cause there's a lot of brewing over here when I was percolating all these ideas, I thought, okay, well, I can't put this inside of a workshop because I don't really t feel ethically. It didn't feel right to me that I would release this information on a pay-per-view or a class type of basis because it doesn't work for everybody the same. The ideas are there. And I think what, what makes it either work or not work is how you apply it to your own business. So I feel like we can, we're going to talk a lot about I, of the ideas that we have and the things that we do, you know, business art, business wise, and, you know, just leave it as it is and hope, you know, hope that somebody garners some value out of it. I think it, I think it's valuable. Yeah. So I did not, I didn't know how I was going to facilitate the information, but I knew I wanted that I had a lot to say. Yeah. Well, and, and the thing is, is that what have we found? Cause we've tested this process a few times already and right. we we tend to have very similar points of view like we basically think the same thing about most things but there is the opportunity or there's you know there's a chance that you know we will have slight variance on things and i think it's yeah. important to for people to have perspectives right that, like yeah. my perspective is might be a little different than yours when it might be different than whoever's listening and i think that that's important right to like okay so it there's there's generalized information that probably can apply to everybody. And then it gets nuanced as it goes down. And maybe that works for you this way, or maybe it works for you that way, you know, but so like, you know, take us with a grain of salt is what we're saying, you know? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. pretty much anything that I'm going to say, I'm not going to 
say things that I, uh, like I'm the type of person that I test a lot. I research a lot, like a lot. And so I'm, I'm the information that I have is all going to be based on my experiences. So, yeah. you know, you could, whatever, take that how you will, like you said. And, uh, and I want to note something that I've noticed uh, about Julie is that she's a hustler. She yeah. is like, she is a hustler. And I don't mean that in a negative sense. I don't mean like, like, Hey, 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 I don't mean like that. I mean, like, yeah. you know, if she has worker, right. She's definitely yeah. like, she has a task. She is on it, right. On it, on it, on it. And it's like, it's even driven me to be a little bit more, a little bit tighter myself because obviously I don't want to disappoint my co-host here, you know, <laughs> by not showing up. So, you know, and I'm pretty good about that too, but but she kind of like Julie takes it to the next level. So expect that kind of energy, right? You know, and and just like we'll be moving. But it doesn't mean like, hey, this is how you should do it. It's more like, you know, it's one view. It's it's two or views two of two views. Different people doing different right. people, right? So For take sure. what you can, pull what you can. You know, I, I'm a, I'm fond of the phrase just in time learning, where it's like getting some information that's important to you and then going and activating on that, right? Go do something with that and don't you know, don't just sit here and listen to, you know, 16 episodes of this podcast when it becomes 16 episodes of the podcast. Don't go listen to 16 episodes straight and then try to find all the information because you may find out we may contradict ourselves over 16 episodes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, because we're, we're recording these, like I, I, what I referred to it as is the state of the union. So mm. Dave and I both have a lot of, of our hands all over social media, with reading and posting and, and surveying and and taking that feedback, and I also hear it from people, you know, um, in, in on my own website and teaching platform. So it's kind of like the state of the union. So we're going to be talking about current topics, um, pretty much. Which, like, you, you know, it could, it could, you, the times change so much. Yeah, yeah. So well, much. and yeah. tech. I mean, even the stuff that we use, right? The technology, everything changes, right? It's like we're yeah. constantly updating. You know, I was like, this isn't going to be a topic, but maybe it's a topic for a future episode. But I was thinking to myself as I was getting ready today about like all the things that I happen to have, you know, like for this specific th setup that we're doing right here, like all the things that I bought, like the the dongles, right? The cords. Oh, so <laughs> many dongles and so cords. Dongles, right? All so many. Things. It's so many, right? You know, but then there's like, you know, there's other sides. You look behind me and there's like books and there's paper and there's boxes and there's, you know, all these things that we have. So it's like, that's a conversation unto itself. But it's just like interesting about how like we just collect these things, these these microcosms of our world, these little parts of ourselves that have all their own little settings and all their own little bits and bots, you know? So I don't know. I, I digress. So there's a lot of bits and bots in podcasting. That could, that could be a whole nother <laughs> podcast. Yeah, right, right. The mishmash well, of I mean, bits and bots. Just even looking at your background, like, I mean, Julie is the, like, she is the, uh, is it Liquitech? She's like the representative. Oh, no, uh, Golden, Golden. Oh, Golden, sorry, excuse well, me. I'm not I, sponsored, so I shouldn't no, say it like that. You should be, because Jesus, look no, at that background. I know, right there. I know. <laughs> I should be. Golden, please but I'm reach not. out. Right. And, Sponsor and the also, podcast. Wait a second. That's a funny thing, because this morning I used gaffer's tape to knock out the, oh, yeah. the big, vivid logo that's here. Right. What, yeah. Who am I? I will yeah. not have a can of Coca Cola here unless they pay me. But who, no, I'm not sponsored. Um, pe yeah. uh, people that watch my stuff, they know that. But I use this <laughs> because it's good, <laughs> really yeah. good. So uh, that's a whole other thing. Anyway. Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so <throat> what are we going to talk about today? Today on the we're going to talk about what is it about January? Uh, we're going to talk about engagement on social media. And then um, we're going to talk about focusing on selling. Should you focus on selling as an artist? You know, and this isn't just going to be for artists. It's not just artists, right? We're creative people in general. We do creative things all over. So there, there will be over the time of this podcast, we'll probably talk about different aspects. Art is definitely going to be the probably the mainstay because we're both artists. But you know, it will it will dive into other aspects of the creative world. So you know, don't fret if it doesn't relate to you because we're talking about you know, golden as a sponsor for this episode. <laughs> yeah, right. no, I think, I think for sure. Um, when other people were commenting on my post this morning for the podcast or introduction, I had some photographers on there. I had some, some other small business owners. So I think, I think this is uh, the, this umbrella, a lot of people can fit under this umbrella for sure. Yeah. yeah. Don't for tune sure. out because there's paint behind me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, just right. 
a lot. The actions are really the the actions are really the same. Yeah. yeah. So I wanted to talk about <clears throat> January as a month in regards to. Uh, I want to say selling sales in general, or you know, or whatever it is you want, whatever box you want to put that in. But also, I want to just talk about like creative output because what I am seeing, at least, and I, I, granted, folks, I get a lot of my uh, inspiration for these topics through threads and what people are saying on threads. If they're not yeah. on threads, you can follow both of us there on threads. I'm just Dave Connery, at, or I'm at I'm Dave, at Dave Connery on there, and she's at Julie Pritchard. Thank on there because I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. like, oh boy, don't ask me for mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um it's uh it, it's just like that you get these vibes from people, and of course the algorithm is gonna push certain content. And I've seen threads do this where like somebody will say something, and then a completely random person will basically the next thread right after that is same essentially thing. like the same basic context, like the like I'm not saying the same thing, but you know, like it's almost like they're talking to each other, but it's completely yes. separate conversations. Yes. So, so threads has a tendency to do that, right. but I have kind of noticed this 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 sense, and of course, we've all felt it probably in January. Like, what is it about January? Why is January so rough on selling, on business being slow, on events being far and few between? You know, things like that. I mean, do you have any thoughts on this? Oh yeah, for sure. I wrote them all down in my special podcast book. Um, <laughs> We're tired and we're cold. <laughs> that's the that's the bottom line. Okay, no, so seriously. just for context, both yeah. si- both 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 of us oh, are yeah, in California. Right. We're, we're both in California, and we and acclimation weather acclimation is a thing. So get off us, okay? Right. Go ahead. <laughs> the, the 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 high today is sixty two degrees. I'll say Fahrenheit because I know there'll be international viewers. Sixty two degrees, and honestly, San Diegans, we don't know what to do with ourselves. <laughs> it's really it's really hard. But I mean, in all seriousness, I did see somebody say that they're going to receive a season's uh, uh, worth of rainfall in the Bay Area in the next few days, um, over the next seven days, and and that much rain really it really is a lot. And I hope you know I don't know what's going to happen with all that, but. Nonetheless, there is some weather happening in Southern California, in California in general. So yeah, we'll try it, Bess. Anyway, January, back to January. We're tired. I think um, for me, November and December is very busy. Um, So there's a lot of, not with the business like that's happening because a lot of my content is digital content. And then, you know, then there's some physical items that I need to ship as well, but it's very busy in, in November and December. And I think in general, as a, it goes back to my career in retail, you're going to make a, you probably going to make a chunk of your annual earnings more exponentially more so in the fourth quarter of sales. So there's a lot of work that small business owners do shows, whatever behind the scenes. So we're all tired. And you think when January comes, a lot of people have already spent their, the money that they're, that they would allow generally for this type of product. So things kind of slow down. The hustle doesn't slow down the hustle. You need to, to, keep, you can't, you can never stop the hustle as a small business owner. I mean, maybe you can, if you're, you know, but you, I can't. Um, do you so, do th- things different in January for that hustle? Like, do you offer special pricing or different products or right. anything? Like- I don't offer, thank you for keeping me on topic. I don't <laughs> offer special <laughs> pricing. My special pricing I offer in the fourth quarter, which is when I think that the most of the people are going to be spending that money on, on this type of product. Um, special pricing in general, I save really for around like major holidays. So in January, I, uh, you know, just like looking at retailers online, sales mostly have ended after New Year's Day. Um, So I then double down on preparing and writing out my ideas and filming content that I'm going to use to propel myself into the next year. So I'm using it as a planning period. So sales, they're going to continue to happen, um, but I'm not, um, but it is a very big planning time for me. Yeah. I plan a lot. It's a, it's interesting. Yeah. Productivity time is, I think, is a big thing for a lot of people. You know, we've coordinated, I've talked to my friend Adam, who you know is at the poster list. Um, he he talks a lot about like his day-to-day, like when he posts up on his videos or even on his threads, he talks about his day-to-day, the things he's operating on. And 
you know, and this kind of like, you know, this kind his conversation is what kind of stirred this whole like concept for me of this, this idea for me. But, you know, it's like, it's a good time to just kind of like take stock, right? F figure yeah. out what it, what's working uh, or what did work, right? And then just kind of double down on that. Like really, if you, if you're good with your, if you're good with your numbers, good with your analytics, figuring out what it is that you, you know, what did well during the year and what times a year were great. Um, I heard an interesting thing the other day. I was watching an episode of Hot Ones, actually, with what um, is that? Hot Ones. It's that TV. Sh it's that YouTube show where they eat the chicken wings. It's oh like yeah, a, yeah, 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 yeah. The guy with this, um, and it was a uh, uh, Gordon Ramsay was on it, right? Okay. And you know the chef, and he. Yeah. He was talking about like towards the end of the episode, the, the host asked him something about growing a business, going to, you know, a restaurant business and stuff like that. And he says, you need to focus your energy on the Monday through Wednesday because anybody can fill seats on Friday or Saturday, right? Monday through Wednesday, are the ones that are tough. If you can't fill seats on Monday through Wednesday, you're not going to succeed. And so it's really kind of focusing your energy on the places that need the most attention. So, you know, like, I mean, yes, okay, we're all going to sell during Christmas and maybe Christmas time is our biggest boon of the year. Like a lot of retail businesses, they do a majority of their business in the last quarter of the year. And maybe that's true for us too. But how can we take that information that, that we've learned? Like, how can we focus some energy towards the months that aren't so good? So yeah, take stock maybe in January, but what are you doing for February? Right? What are you doing for, you know, April and May when, you know, Easter's over and there's nothing happening until summertime, right? At least as far as quote unquote holidays happen. So it's like looking at that information and really kind of pulling in like, okay, how can I put some more energy into this space? Whether it's maybe it's offering sale prices or maybe it's offering special deals, or maybe it's just like giving more attention to, and that we'll talk about this, this in a, in a moment, but like engaging with your audience so that they don't, they don't forget you. They don't, you, you're still relevant to them in that time period because, you know, it, sometimes, you know, they, we go by the wayside sometimes, just like I said about like, even though I was following Julie, like I would see her post every once in a while, but not very often, you know? And so it's just like the algorithm isn't going to help us there. So we kind of have to be, we have to activate that ourselves, I think. Oh, you have to get out there. Let me tell you something. Gordon Ramsay, it was Gordon Ramsay. He seems yeah. like a genius. I, that, I couldn't agree with that more. The Monday through Wednesday is a great metaphor. Is, is this a metaphor? Like, yeah. A, yeah, it's like a metaphor. Monday through Wednesday, that's like totally exactly correct. <laughs> I love that statement. But you know what? The other thing is, is that the reason that in January, even though things are going to be slowing down, you have to treat your, your Monday through Wednesday, you're still going to be doing the outreach and the engagement and the, and, and, or trying the engagement hustle and developing that contact content. Because even though people aren't spending money in Mon Monday through Wednesday or January, yeah. They're liking, they're saving and planting seeds and getting to know you and quite possibly then maybe looking at your back past content or whatever. So the reach out during that period is definitely super important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 100%. So do you, do you have a newsletter? Do you run a newsletter? Yes, I have. Well, I mean, I don't know. What do you mean run? Not, well, I mean, do you, do you, do you run are, a newsletter? Yeah, I run a newsletter. <laughs> yeah, that's a I newsletter. Mean, do, do you send it out on a, do you send news or, or emails out to your people on a regular basis? I do one to two per month and okay. there, it's not a regular like scheduled event. Like it's first month. and 15th. It's not like that, right? No, no. That's a paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't have it on a regular basis, but I do have a list and I'm soliciting people to join the list and I, and I send it out twice yeah. a month. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, cur I'm always curious about that because I do mine weekly. I was doing it twice weekly, but like different contexts, like one would be like a deep dive information. And then the other would be, it's like my, my main edition each week, which is essentially all the news and tidbits and, and thoughts that I have about what's happening in the creative world. Um, I, I, I pulled back on going, I went back to once a week doing just the Friday, what I call the hungry Fridays. And then I put the deep dive content more into a blog um, just because I felt like that way I could just link to it in the, in the episode. I, I just felt like people were getting a little bit of email fatigue from me. And so I, I kind of pulled back on that, but I've always done at least once a week. And, um, you know, and I'm like, you know, one of the things that we, 
talked about early in early on in a few of the practice episodes is that you know like this um curse of knowledge where it's like i know things or i believe things because they're based on my own personal experiences and so i may feel good about them and, fi- and feel that they're right but not necessarily right maybe maybe once a week isn't right for every creative person maybe it doesn't need to be that much maybe it could be every other week or you know randomly two times a month like you said unscheduled or whatever or maybe once a month yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I think at a certain point you probably like, I wouldn't go longer than that personally you mean because I feel like less, less, less than outreach. once a month. Oh yeah. I, th- I think you're right. And I, yeah. and I agree, but sometimes I have to push myself. You have, you, a lot of times you think, you know, oh, I don't have anything to say or whatever. I generally send the newsletter out if I feel like I don't know, this is totally unscientific, unsci- uh, but I feel like if people are, for example, snowed in, <laughs> hmm. or I, 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 I do it when I feel like people are going to be online. Oh, wow. And I, that might just be like hocus pokery. Um, <laughs> well, if so it works I don't for know you, it works, works for you. Yeah. I mean, what, what I don't, you know, I can't, I haven't dived into those metrics as much as you have for sure, but I am doing it. And I know it's really important. I mean, we've been talking about this already. So if you're only seeing a post of mine once every six months, what does that say to the rest of the audience? There's allegedly 113,000 people on my Instagram account. Very small people, very small amount of them are seeing the content. I need to get the content into their mailbox. That's the only other way. So 2024, and we had some, Dave, you know that emoji where your head blows off? Yeah, Dave, yeah. <laughs> Dave sent me a topic for this podcast with that. I was like, Oh my God, what the heck? That was like so advanced. <laughs> I couldn't even, I'm like, Oh, this is, I'm going to sound like a jackass talking yeah. about this because I, it's not that it doesn't have to be that complicated for, for what I'm doing. It could be, and I'm looking forward to learning in it, but it sounds like the newsletter is maybe now more important. So than ever. Yeah. I think right? so too. Well, and yeah, I won't go into it, but basically it was talking yeah. about how like, um, you cookies. know, like, yeah, cookies are going to be a mm-hmm. big issue, like website cookies, not chocolate chip cookies, which I wish I had yeah. right now with my coffee, Delicious. but anyway, so, <laughs> but, um, no, like cookies are going to be a big issue going forward and tracking information. Like if you run ads on Facebook or you run ads through Google or, you know, other places that use all of that information, it, it, it's going to be. A big issue. Well, I mean, just as simple as like you have a Squarespace page, you have a Shopify, I mean, a Squarespace page, a Squarespace site, you have a Shopify site, and you have information that get you get they pull information based on who is visiting your site, right? That information is basically going to be way less effective, way less accurate going forward because of these cookie situations. But I don't want to get too deep into it. That was like, yeah. it was deep in the weeds. It was definitely super inside baseball. It's it's one of these articles that I would share to Elite that I would share in the the newsletter with some context, of course, you know, but like, let but allow people an opportunity to go dive deeper. But it was pretty, it was a pretty, it was a pretty uh, deep con- <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I was deep in the weeds I, on that one, for sure. It's so. really, it was really important though. I mean, from what I, I was like, oh, I, it was very complicated and very important and it got the wheels spinning. So that's yeah. all I need. That's all I need to take some sort of action. What that looks like, I don't know, but we shouldn't talk about that. Let's <laughs> like, we, yeah, let's we, stick maybe, with we'll, you know, to figure out when we could talk about that. After, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, if, you, if you're this interested like in podcast. Fine. Yeah, podcast one hundred and one. That's going to be yeah. in the two hundred and one. <laughs> two hundred and one, right? The yeah. events. Right. The, yeah, it's the graduate program. No, right. like if you want to know information about it, just go Google like uh, Google and cookies for twenty twenty four. Google that phrase, right? Google yeah. cookies twenty twenty four, right? And um, you'll find information on that. Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah. this does bring us second to the second topic, which is about right. you know engagement, right? Like yes. Um, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Okay, so you're on, we'll just say Instagram, but it could be any social media channel Yeah. and your, um, engagement drops, but you have had posts before that do really well. Um, do you, do you think that you are in, I I mean, I don't even know how to phrase this question. I'm seeing a lot of people complaining about poor engagement or whatever. So I'll, I'll say the way I look at it. I look at my Instagram and my social media channels as my storefront. 
So that means when you come to my channel, things are going to be all in relation to my store in something. And it doesn't, you know, there's so many things that I could post that are in relation to the content. I don't post stray content frequently. And if I do, yeah. there's a specific place where I'm going to put it, but I'm not going to put it there on my feed. I could put it in my story. I'm going to put it on my website because I feel like a lot of people tune out the minute I post that content. Why? Because people don't recognize my family or my dog or my, you know, the park, you know, any, anything that I would take a picture of where I would feel that emotional connection to. Mm. I feel like the, the content that I need to share is what's going to generate the most reaction from the people I want to be interested in my content. Collectors and yeah. customers, students, that kind of stuff. What, what about you? How do you feel about sharing that type of content and how would you like make your feed? Oh man, it, this is, this is sticky for me because I, I can honestly say that I, I have not mastered social media. Like in that respect, right? Like I, I, I feel like I'm doing a good job on threads. I think thread, threads, I, I think it's so. like I lean into threads a little bit more than I do Instagram these days because of this exact topic. Because I feel like at times I go to Instagram, it's like, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. You know, and it's, you know, I, I don't want to be too disheartening here, but it's like, I feel like I've never done a great job of doing exactly what you're saying. And I feel like um, I even had this kind of conversation in my head just yesterday as I was scrolling through Instagram. Like I was scrolling through Instagram, but thinking about like, you know, you get these posts of people like, "Hey, here's a th this this audio is gonna go big. Uh, you know, make a reel with it." Like, and I'm just like thinking, "Oh God, yeah, I, I don't want to do that, right? I don't want right. to do that." And and I, it it just feels inauthentic to me, but I but I don't want to discount it because obviously it works. And if you can find like, let's say somebody who is an artist who does have a pretty good clean feed knows how to use what they've done, what they've practiced on Instagram and turn it into a reel in a way that works. Even if they are using a trending audio or a trending um, meme within the program or within the app, it's just always been a bit of an issue for me. Like I feel like, People like how I show up when I show up on camera, show up on on the microphone, when I show up yeah. when I write. Like they they like how I share myself, but I don't know. Like my, my topics are not general enough to go wide, right? I'm not going to go viral about some of the I, things that I talk about. Well, okay, we'll stop the press. <laughs> You're doing an amazing job on threads with discussion and topics and like whatever. And the way that we connected, first of all, there is amazing in general because there's so much of it, mm -hmm. but people are on my Instagram. Like I think more so in support of you than me at, at, at the last time I checked, even with that. So you, the, the, the followers that you are reaching, even though they're smaller are definitely more engaged. There's a thing I, you don't need to spin around and turn the canvas and do a, some sort of viral um, <laughs> act on Instagram. If you're already dancing getting on TikTok. the, the engage, yeah, you don't have to dance on TikTok because your engagement is working. So everybody's is going to look different, but I'm, what I'm trying to say is you, I play the game and it's, it's a sad state of affairs that I do this, but I don't like to hear people say, those type of things. And then I always like look at their feed and I go, Oh, I really can help you. I hope you see my post. I hope you see my podcast because I think a lot of people don't understand. This is a consistency thing that needs to happen here. You need to be consistent, but not what you're mentioning with the people that say, Oh, look at this audio clip, do this clip because it's going to go viral. This is the next big clip. Those, that type of content Oh God, I, I don't like that type of content. I also don't like the type of contact where you look at the, the feed and you see every thumbnail the same with writing immediate yeah. turn off for me because I, that's somebody who's trying to sell me something. Trying, <laughs> it, that's a snake oil because that, you know, my viral, I could use the same, the trending audio and absolutely not go viral. It's happened a lot. It, that's, it's such a, hit and miss type of thing. But the engagement that you're receiving, I think is what you should focus on more so than the content. Yeah. Well, and th there is an interest, and I appreciate everything you said. Um, my threads engagement is definitely better than any place else. 
And I think it has to do with the fact that I've obviously, when you, when you get on threads and you share, it's like you strip away everything, all the pretense, all the, all, everything else. Cause it's just right. you, it's just you and your words at that point. I mean, sure. Yeah. You can post pictures. Right. Right. But that's, it doesn't really, it's not the main purpose of that, of that platform. Um, you know, and I, and I'm good with my words. Right. So, For sure. you know, I mean, I still have the occasional throw in the occasional typo in there. Thank goodness they have an edit button, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good with my words and, and, you know, and then asking questions and kind of encouraging the, the community there, the little group of community of people that I've built there the, to kind of participate. However, like when I go over to Instagram and, and yes, uh, I have had people that came on to that post when we shared the, you know, the teaser of this podcast, I, it, those people are all built up from all the other things that I've done over time. These like everybody that chimed in for the most part are people that have followed me for a long time because I've, I've always been a dabbler. Like when new technology is out there, like I'm the first, like I was on TikTok oh, before platform. most of anybody yeah. else that I knew. Right. Yeah. Um, I kind of lost favor with that place. It just felt weird to me after a while and I just stopped, but um, regardless, you know, I was podcasting before people were doing it. A lot of people in the creative world were doing it. I was, I wrote my own books before people were doing it. I was blogging, um, you know, a lot more than most people were back in the day. And I think it just kind of like over time, it's just like I built up these people that have been diehards and they're the people that show up. And I think that what probably happens is these people probably also follow you. And there just happens to be this crossover between some of our people, right? Yeah. And that as soon as like your face shows up and my face shows up in the post, then it's just like an instant trigger, right? <laughs> Good or bad. <laughs> right, right, right. It's an instant trigger to, for people to be like, oh, wow, this sounds so great. I like this person. I like that person. This is going to be awesome. And so, yeah, but, you know, and I love all the people that did reply. I really appreciate those, uh, those folks who did that. It was great. It made me feel really good. I did think the same thing. I was like, wow, I think all the posts that are people reacting are from my, you know, from people that know me. <laughs> Yeah, which I thought was oh. really interesting. Yeah, again, considering our contrast in numbers, right? I have right. less than five thousand followers on Instagram, and she has over one hundred thirteen thousand. And um, yeah, so it's interesting. But that you know that could yeah, it could change right real quickly. I'm pretty sure your oh. feed's going to be filled <laughs> with turn, other people. Everybody's going to tune off. <laughs> You're right. My people are going to tune off. No, um, you know what though? I, from, the, from since the beginning of the day, I, I told this story before. Is that somebody told me, um somebody at one time a few years ago mentioned to me a dog that had a 10,000 person following and the yeah. dog was starting to get sponsorships and, you know, things that go like this. And I was painting and I knew I, you know, I was selling digital content and I was like, and I had like 2000 followers at the time. And I made it a, a goal to myself to become more popular than the dog because I realized, <laughs> I realized when the dog, reached 10,000, you know, before there used to be different thresholds of followers that Instagram required for you to earn the metrics or, um, be able the to blue check mark. link. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Um, yeah. and so I wanted to become more popular, the dog and that at that moment I started, okay, I have these images. I have some thoughts. I have to make a post every day. And I have to do it consistently. And I prepared the post in advance week, you know, at weekly. And I just started doing it and it, grew and grew and grew and grew. Some people that post a, a viral dancing video that get 113,000 followers in one post may not understand, for, oh, for sure they don't understand the hustle and the work that takes. Um, and, you know, anyway, I'm, I'm, anyway, I'm happy to be here, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so let me ask you though, because yeah you've got a process and you're really consistent. Are you still, you post once a day still or twice a day or what do you do? I post one post a day and generally two reels a week. And I okay. plan everything out on Sunday. Well, in, a, in a, you know, at the beginning, at the beginning of January here, I, I wrote out, I planned a file of as many real topics that I could do because most of my reels are going to be general product knowledge or free little technique tutorials that I don't, offer in my workshops. So you can have that or you can have this. So I, it takes planning because sometimes I sit here, you know, and like drool comes out and I don't know what I'm doing and I could <laughs> stare into space for hours, but I make the list. And so now I can pick things and the posts I write, I have a planner, um, uh, that has, you know, like a day planner and I write the post that I'm the image that I'm going to post and the topic. So it's one a day. And then in my stories, sometimes I post 
more and that the, the stories are less formal. That's where I post maybe something that doesn't apply to my art business, like a, you know, a non art, you know, a family photo or a vacation. You know, I'm not on vacation. What are we talking about? Like a, a, <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on a hike. So I'm, here's what I am. Uh, I post that in my stories. Yeah. I'm the same. Yeah. I do the same. One and I've day. even like yeah. moved, like oh. if I do reels, I push them. I don't put them to the feed, right? I put them, like I take them off of the main feed, right? Because that's some advice that I got, like pull them off yeah. your main feed because they somehow that brings it down. Like, I don't care. I just wanted, like, I went and pulled a bunch of my old videos and just pulled them off the feed and just left them in the reels section. And so now my feed is basically just a bunch of, you know, pictures oh. of my, Photos. of my, my art or whatever I do. Right. Yeah. Um. But I don't know if it's, I don't know if it works any better or less than, or better or worse than it did before. But um, I did want to follow that up. Oh, the reels. Do you see, like, is there a particular content type that you're seeing works better or worse? Or is it just because you're mixing it up that works, that works for you? Definitely how to glimpse inside the process a hundred percent all day long. And if you're saying you can't do that. Um, and, 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 and also with your face in it. So, you know, a lot of people say, well, I don't have an exciting process. Yes, you do. The walking into the studio or the space, the setting up of the camera, just clips of what you're doing day to day. That's creative. If you're a photographer, you are scouting the shoot, you're walking to the shoot, you're, you're cleaning the, the equipment, you're setting it up on a, a, a tripod. You you take a picture of you adjusting your subject matter, if, if it's a uh, still life or you know people, you know fixing somebody's I don't know hairdo, you know, oh, you know something. You do <laughs> have a process, but I think a hundred percent that people are watching hairdo. I mean hairdo how to <laughs> videos <laughs> the most for me. Yeah, yeah. Do do you repurpose content? Yes. How often do you I, repurpose content? Well, for example, um, I had a technique um, planned for this week and it failed and I didn't have anything else. So I repurposed a controversial clip that I had in my phone of uh -huh. me dumping out my beautiful crayon set into a pile. It makes people crazy. The feedback on that, that action makes people go wild. I had to post <laughs> that instead because my tutorial fell. And I'm, I only have time to shoot. I shoot the, the video content always on Monday. So my Monday was shot. So I had to go back and pull from the reruns. Mm. Um, it's not very frequent, but if something happens, if I'm, you know, if I'm, if I'm unable to film that how-to video, I'm going to pull and then maybe rewrite a new caption for sure yeah. with the new trending audio. It's easy because everything's in the phone. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So you're, you're, you're basically, you're prepping well in advance, which is something I've been terrible about doing. Like a, like you're really good with, with getting your content in check early on. If you've got the impetus for that, cool. I, I've always struggled with that. I always get like impulsive, like, especially like, you know, you get a new, uh, productivity gap and like, Oh, I'm going to do really good with this. Or I'm going to get a, I'm going to get myself a notebook and I'm going to, I'm going to write down all my thoughts and, and, and I'm going to stay, you know, my bullet journal is going to be full. And then it just like within a, a couple of weeks, I'm less like, yeah, right. You know, that's just, it, I, I struggle with that aspect. And, and if there was a pill I could take to, to fix that, I would, I would be an addict on that pill for sure. Because I know it's definitely one of the things that, that, that I lack. And I, I wish I had a little bit more structure or capability for structure or rather patience for structure, because I definitely need more of that. But yeah, um, well, you know, the, a lot of, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, a lot of people, a lot of people struggle with, I don't have the time to do this. And that's exactly what I did. And so filming those little clips, this isn't like where I set up the camera and film myself for three hours. It's okay. I'm going to demonstrate this paintbrush. What are the shots? It, it take you back to high school media class. The shots are taking the paintbrush out of the wrapper, putting it in the water, putting it in the paint, putting it on the canvas. Boom, boom, done. Yeah. That's it. So I could, I do everything probably in less than an hour. Yeah. And then I can just spit it out on the day that it's supposed to be. I, that's what, I, that's what, it, that's really what I have to do because otherwise, like I said, I'm staring off. Oh God, what am I going to do? Did I do that already? I don't know. You know? Yeah. I used to follow a bunch of like video editors and video, like people that like YouTube content creators that, that make content about 
filming content, right? And one of the one time this one guy was talking about Mr. Beast. Are you familiar with Mr. Beast? Uh, I know the name. I don't. Okay. I could not pick him out of a police lineup. <laughs> Must be okay. Anyway, it's like, the, the most popular YouTuber on the on the platform. Period. Yeah. But um, they were the, there was a there was a bit they were talking about about how many transitions he makes within the first like within the first thirty seconds of any video that he yeah. puts out. There's mm-hmm. usually like you know at least five to 15 different transitions within 15 within 30 seconds right it's like wow. doing like zoom into this and like it's, it's fast paced because that's kind of how his videos go you know and not and i don't recommend this but he said what he said in an interview was that that pacing is what's important to get people engaged in watching a video for the next 20 minutes of whatever it is that they're doing right so keeping that pacing keeping the you know giving people an anticipation and throwing in a bunch of like you know, like, well, what's going to happen next kind of situation. Yeah. I don't recommend that for every artist, but the idea of like understanding that those clips that you're saying, like having, having the different shots, having the different perspectives, it's not just, you know, the overhead camera while you paint. Right. Oh yeah. It takes work. It takes energy. It takes thought, yeah. you know, but those, camera, it, those angles create energy. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. The movement, the transition, it keeps the eyes interested. It keeps your mind focused on what's going on. And if they move fast, sometimes it makes people watch it again because they're like, oh, I missed that little bit. What what she do right there? Like, what was yeah. that thing? And so she has to go back and watch it again. You know, the repeat, the, you know, let the video spin through and watch again. So, you know, I, I get all that. Sometimes I get just like, so when I go to film my own, it's just like, oh, you know, I've done those videos. But sometimes I just feel like, oh, man, I just want to get a thought out. I just want to put a thought out. I just, yeah. I'm very impulsive. It's almost like just like my threads. Like I write stuff that's, sometimes I plan it. But a lot of times it's impulsive. Like just this random thought comes to my head and threads makes it easy for me to go out and just kind of bang it out there and put it out there. It's not right. as easy to do that for me for Instagram because I just have this impulse. And But it's like, I'm not in the space to record that. And then even if I were to like, say, take a bunch of notes, of like the things that I'm impulsively feeling, right? And then put them in a put them in a in a in a journal or whatever. Of like these are the things that I want to talk about in the next week on Instagram. Sometimes my impulsive feelings about that thing are diminish greatly by the time I get back to that list. Oh, that you happens know? for sure. Yeah, but yeah. you but but save the list because it could come. It save it for the rainy day <laughs> yeah. because you might need it one day. The day that you have a, a you know a blank. You yeah. need it. You know, shout out to Mr. Beast because that type of content creating is exceptionally difficult and not for the weak of heart. Yeah. Not for the well, weak of heart at all. Yeah. Um, but well, he employs you know a hundred different people in his business. Well, so yeah, I got, I have none, none, <laughs> right, I have none, right, right. but you it's know us. what else though, uh, you know, just to put this in per- into perspective for anyone that it might be watching and, and this type of situation, uh, I'm looking at 11 seconds of your attention before people yeah. fall off. So that's, yeah different way yeah. different right yeah do your I, I think most of your videos are pretty short your reels are pretty short do you ever go longer like what's the what, what's no. typical length of your videos so my teaching videos are hours long the the uh, the instagram um i used to i used to like when i first started the the reels would be like 30 seconds or more like when i first started years ago making these little videos on how-to videos um mm. But now that the metrics are available, uh, you can see the drop off. And so, you know, I'm not, I used to feel like, what, what can I show in 10 seconds? Um, I think people can, you know, probably more frequently than you think people can make, people can understand it without the extra fluff. So it's always going to be quick. And you think about what, think about it when you're watching something, the patience, you just, a lot of people scroll off. I scroll off. Um, so I'm looking at 10, 15 seconds and I don't feel bad about that. That's the length. And Mm -hmm. if anybody, you know, if anybody wants more, um, I welcome the questions, whatever I answer all the questions and things like that. But, um, you really got to use those editing tools on there to cut off the dead air time. You know, if you're, if you, uh, you know, if you're struggling with opening up a package, cut it, you know, that this type of thing that, that take, that takes those seconds up, you have to, I feel like you have to cut it out. Yeah, you got to learn exciting. to be a good editor for sure. Yeah, it's easy. So. It's not that hard. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're getting short on time, but we do have one other topic. And this right. is kind of one coming, again, from uh, inspiration from threads because I tend to get, like, I'll post something up. And I don't talk about, 
I, I don't talk about making money from art so much as I talk about showing up in a way so you can sell to your people, right? Like the idea of like, I know some people out here want to make money from their art. This is what I talk about in regards to what I believe is ways to help people do that. And in these posts, invariably, I will always get somebody who's typically outside of my circle, right? Like they they just happen across my my post. Maybe it was like somebody commented it on it or somebody liked it and it got fed to them because of that other person. And they'll say something to the regards of like, I shouldn't have to sell my art. It should be done by an agent, right? Like whether it's a dealer or a gallerist or whatever, like put it up on Saatchi art and make Saatchi do the work for me. I shouldn't have to focus on that because I should be focusing on making art and not selling. Hmm. And though I understand that viewpoint, I feel like it's an antiquated viewpoint. And I think it's a bit of a cop out. I think it's a thing like I don't, I'm scared of selling. I don't like the idea. It makes me anxious and nervous to talk to people about my work. So I'm just going to say this so that I feel like a, you know, like, like, like more superior in my p position that my art is more important than trying to help, you know, find a way to get it into people's hands. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> That's my rant. Uh, um, I mean, I know what you're going to say, but is it weird? I mean, I mean is it weird that in yeah. 2024, this is like, this is, is still pompous? Is it po oh, pompous? I mean, what's I the, what is it? It's weird. Um, it just feels like, think. yeah, it's, go ahead. it's, it's college, it's college educated artists that, um, came up with the idea like that studio art is important being in galleries is important all that stuff is important i think that's largely where those individuals come from not all college people just that's kind of where the that's where the seed phase is in my opinion go ahead <laughs> sorry go ahead go ahead, go ahead. that's my thought i yeah. interrupted you so i like i figured like no, oh, I, I, I stepped on your toes on that one so yeah now go go you go julie <laughs> all right I'm going to say, here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say for the most common group of artists, you got some people with that, you know, the, the median group of artists, some people sell paintings for $50,000 plus. I'm not that artist. Um, I'm looking at $5,000 and under. So the people that are up here in the 40, 50, 60, 100, whatever thousand dollar range, yeah, you probably need an agent. You probably need help networking with the kind of person that's going to afford that kind of art. The, having said that, the majority of people that are selling art are not in that echelon. I hate to break it to you, but you're not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, And you can't just put yourself in that echelon and say, I have an MFA. I'm an artist. This is $50,000 because you need... Yeah, proof of Background. concept for sure. Yeah, exactly. So um, those people can do that. I think for the common people like um, like us, <laughs> that if you can afford to pay the gallerist or the agent or whatever, they're gonna. Ch what are they gonna charge you, Dave? Fifty percent is that standard? Yeah, forty to fifty percent. Forty to fifty percent of your income out the window, or get a day planner and. <laughs> and make your own content and mm. keep the money. That's the bottom line. It's the bottom line because I'm going to tell you something. You put your art in a gallery is not a guarantee that it's going to sell. It's also not a guarantee that that gallerist is going to be as invested and believing in you as much as you do. So I feel like you're the best vessel to sell your work. That's how I do. I never do. I, you, I did do it. I did have a gallery representation. I have sold pieces through galleries. I have had licensing contracts. I have doing all that for if anybody's going to say, oh, well, you can't do it. Well, you newsflash, I can. And I did. And I didn't like giving up that much of my income because I looked at it like, how much can I make now myself to support my family? That's it. Yeah. It's To me, it's a simple choice. Yeah. Well, and and, and I don't discount anybody for feeling that way. Uh, I do think it's an antiquated belief system, but you know, it's like, it stems back to the origin, the origin of selling. But I think obviously the world has changed the, the, you know, the, the, the ability for us to do our own thing is so much easier now than it was, you know, 30, 20, 30 years ago. Yeah. It's not the um, same, not the same environment for sure. No, not as much at all. Right. And you're right. You know, I've read an interview 
uh, I can't remember the name, her name. She was a gallerist here in Laguna beach. Uh, I want to say Susan Greenwood, Greenberg, something like that. Um, she had a very popular gallery in Laguna beach and she, you know, it's probably the most well-known gallery in the city. Uh, I don't know if it still exists, but she did an interview and she was very candid about it. And she said that, that you know, when somebody asked her about why certain artists um, get promoted more than others, it's like, well, they just, there just happens to be like, uh, you know, it's, it's that 80, 20 rule, right? What do you mean? 80% of the money is going to be made from 20% of the artists oh. in that gallery. Yeah. Right. Um, 20% of the artists are going to make, are going to sell the most. Right. And so those artists, like if they're selling more, then of course the gallerist is going to lean into her collector base, her contacts to sell those because she has proof of concept that those artists sell. And does she try to sell, you know, some of the artists that she has in her, in her stable mm -hmm. of artists? Of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if they're not hitting as well, then right. the other ones, then she's got a, she's got a business to run. Right? Her whole For point sure. is running a business. It's not just to promote you just because you were accepted as part of her collection of artists or group of artists. You know, she's got a business to run and she's got, you know, to, to, to operate these things. And I think at a certain point, like, you know, to rely on that, the, 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 I don't know, it, it's a, it's a false equivalency in my, in my opinion, but there's also an added aspect to it because I know that when you get, you know, like a lot of these galleries will, will lock you down like you can't sell to any other galleries once they're, oh, yeah. once they're represented right you can't sell other products unless they say it's okay to sell other products right like if you wanted to offer limited edition prints well they're, they're probably not going to do that they want their cut right and so you're locked down into the contract of whatever it is that you sold there so you know it's not all you know just because you're represented doesn't mean number one you're going to make money number two you know, you're going to have the freedom to do whatever you want. You're basically an indentured servant at that point to that gallery to, in order to make the money that you want to make. But I think a lot of art gallery represented artists would tell you that it's not all, you know, sunshine and roses, right? It's like, no, <laughs> it could be very it difficult. Isn't. Yeah. yeah but it's just, uh, like it also, like, I mean, for everything, how, how quickly do you get the, the, the funds into your account when you do that? Do you wait until the show, the end of the show or whatever? And, you know, I, if I sell something on my website, I get it as soon as it clears the bank immediate. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah I know I, I've been in a few random shows and if I sold a piece, then it was like at minimum after like a week after the show closed, but usually like up to 30 days after the show closed, because it's like, I feel like it's a bit of a, uh, <laughs> What is it? They a bit of a uh, Ponzi scheme in a sense where they kind of like they use that money to generate money for the next show. So they, you know, they yeah. it, you know, like shell game. Yeah, exactly. They're moving, but you know, paying, you know, robbing for Peter to pay Paul kind of thing, situation. Yeah, so, not um, all, of course. You not know. all. No, I'm right. sure many of them operate uh, legitimately, but sometimes they, right. you know, they might have to be a little bit creative with their funds, right? Right. So there's a, anyway. that's, a, that's like a whole thing. Like also like the definition, well, maybe we could put this for a, an, another episode is what the definition of gallery. And when you say you have a show, it doesn't make a difference if it's at the cafe or if it's at the museum. I'm, you know, that's like a yeah. whole, that's a whole thing. Yeah. I guess ultimately it, it comes down to this. Like if you ever get any flack from anybody saying that you shouldn't be worried about selling your art, just tell them, Hey, look, man, I got paid today. Did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. There you go. That settles right. it. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Well, that's a great right. show. Any, yeah. uh, anything else you want to, you want to share anything else? Any other thoughts? Uh, no, I like the show. I hope, um, you know, cheers to many future episodes. Push back, push back. Oh, Hey, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're going to have a YouTube channel. We've got the yeah. YouTube channel. Um, yeah. so we have links. We'll put links in the, in the description of this. If we, if there were any, whatever, probably the, yeah. uh, we got the, uh, the timeline thing. This is a legitimate operation. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We've, yeah. we've done the homework. Yeah. Well, I'll put some links in there to your stuff, put some links to my stuff so people can check yeah. us out we'll further. We'll put some links. Know. We'll put the timeline thing. You can fast forward, whatever. Yeah. Appreciate yeah, it. Sure. Yeah. And we don't have, we don't have Spotify locked in just yet. I don't even know how to put, that's going to be a whole nother dongle. Don't worry. I, I got it taken care of. I got it. I got <laughs> okay. it. I, I, I'll okay. handle it. But, um, you know, yeah, so that's not quite unlocked yet. In fact, that one might actually go a little bit later because okay, here's a little inside baseball here that I've cool. heard that like you should have a couple of episodes recorded 
in the bank before you po- publish to like a podcasting platform because okay. you know people don't want to have like just one episode and they're like where's the rest right okay so but youtube maybe we'll doesn't do, count right? no youtube doesn't count we do the youtube okay. and then we'll publish all publish maybe the first two or three episodes to we'll spotify grow. in the future okay. i'll let we'll let you know exactly when that goes live yeah so. thank you everybody very much yeah thanks very much thanks julie yeah. appreciate you hosting this yeah and then, uh yeah, I'll see you next we'll time. We'll figure it out. <laughs> see you next time.